Hello everyone, welcome to another bird. This time it's a song thrush and I am just going to cut you straight into the embroidery because this is a little bit of a longer video because I'll have some channel news at the end so I hope you'll stick around and find out what that is. I hope you enjoy watching it. I'm here on what could be the final bird and it's going to be a song thrush and I've printed off an image so I could get the shape and the colours and what have you. And I've been really wanting to do some wool embroidery for a, on one of the birds. So I am going to do some wool work for the song thrush. And the only problem with that is when I went to get my krill embroidery threads, I just didn't have quite the right colour. So I've gone through both my krill wools. I've got wools out of my tapestry wools as well to try and get something approaching the colours that I need. So I've drawn on the bird on this oatmeal linen. So I was going to just paint the background because I've got my ink tents here as you can see. And I thought I'd paint the background a bit grassy and green to set the bird in. And so I've already changed my mind again and I'm going to actually paint the bird to start off with and do a bit of a combination of paint, wool, thread. So I'll keep your fingers crossed it works out. So I'm going to hoop up and get started. Well here goes. I'm going to mix up a bit of a brownish um, fawn. I'm just going to go in very lightly to start with. And I'm, not, I'm going to try not to use a huge amount of water because I don't want this to be going without the lines really. It may be that I'll leave some of this painted fabric unstitched and do this combination. So I'm just mixing the colour actually on the ink tense blocks. And if I just get a background in, that'll also be lovely because it means I can overstitch without having to colour in every part of the fabric with thread. I am using quite a big brush here, but it's got a very fine point. But I think this is all going to be stitched, so I'm not going to do overly much on this bit. I just put some of this in, and then I've got an option. I'm going to cheat and not do the feet. I just want it to be fading away. I'm actually only using one colour of ink tense here. I'm using a bit more water now so that the, the background doesn't have hard edges. I just need to be careful around the bird. Don't need to work it too much. Just be a bit more careful around the beagle or the beagle will be getting stitched so it's not a huge problem if the green goes onto the beak. When I'm near the bird I'm just using the very tip so that I don't put a lot of water onto the fabric and that mitigates the way it spreads. The other thing would have been to do the background first. Of course that's just too easy isn't it and, I, and it would have meant I had to think ahead <laughs> and I didn't think ahead because I just decided once I'd sat down to film that I was going to paint it all in. Right, leave it at that. I'm starting off with this one in my needle. It's a bit of old Penelope Cruel wool. I'm going to start just showing the outline of the bed. I'm going to be using a sort of a combination of long and short and split stitch. And I'll just use whichever I feel like at the time. At the minute I'm doing split. But I will go to using long and short, I would think. In fact, I'm already doing that now. I'm going to go back up. I really like doing this type of embroidery. You can really get a lot of detail. And it's it's just different from doing the slow stitching type of a thing. And just as easy really, once you just get the idea of laying the stitches 
always in the directions of whatever you're doing. If you're doing fur on an animal, then you're lying them in the direction of the fur, the way the fur lies. If it's a bird, you're doing the directions of the feathers. And I think I spend as much time looking at my reference picture as I do looking at the embroidery. It's just keep looking, keep keep observing, keep keep an idea in your head of what you're trying to achieve. And then you'll soon realise if you've gone too far with a particular thread or a stitch is too long. You can see it almost straight away. I think this uh, has like a little brown cap that's different from the rest of the brownie grey on his body. Whether I can get that or not with the, the wool colours I've got, I don't know, but I'll try. I actually think I'll be splitting some of the, the tapestry wool down because it'll be too thick for me to work, but I'll see how it goes. I've never actually done that before, split my tapestry walls down. Just a line down here where the beak's coming in. I really need the cream in here, but it helps me to get a sense of the way the feathers are going, and then you, you just sort of build, keep building it up. As you can see by putting the paint in, I actually could get away with minimal stitching, but that wasn't really the reason for the paint. I wanted to paint the background and then I thought I could do a combination of both things. Some of these stitches might actually end up getting covered up, I'm not sure at the moment. I think that's as far as I want to take that at the minute, so I'm just going to leave this hanging. I might, might need it, I might not. I've got this cream tapestry wool in my needle, but I've actually gone and split this strand in half and, and so I'm hoping that's going to work well because I feel it's too thick to work as it is and the top of the breast is quite a creamy colour and then I'm probably going to change to this more greyish colour for the bottom part. I'm just going to see how this uh, lays in. Actually I think it's going to be fine. Actually, it's working really well. I never thought to split tapestry wool before. I'll make the stitches shorter as I get nearer to his head, and then that helps me do fine detail. It's going to be quite a bit of embroidery on here, more than I have been doing. Um, obviously, when you're doing a, the slow stitch technique and you're using fabric, the fabric takes over a lot of the stitching and it's nice to just be able to do whichever that you're wanting to do at the time. I don't want to be limited by one or the other really. Work back and forth but it is still long and short stitch. I'm just not doing it in rows because I'm not following a pattern. I'm just putting the long and short stitches in where I feel the need to be. And this will be getting overstitched with the pattern of his beautiful dark marks, the dark ends of his feathers. I think I'll just carry on laying this breast in and come back to you when I've got a bit more of it done. I've got quite a bit of the breast in now and just laid those feathers in and I've just changed to this bit of a grey old anchor wool. Again I've split it down so it's just two strands of what was the tapestry wool. It splits without too much ado um, and I've, I'm finding it really nice to stitch with. I think I'm going to leave that. I don't think I'm going to stitch that at all. I think I'm going to fade the stitches out into the painted section. Of course I could change my mind but that's the plan at the moment and I'm going to just lay this silver grey in up into this bit here because I can see that the feathers change from creamy to whitish 
and this silver grey is the nearest I've actually got to white so I'm hoping that it'll do the job but if I go up to there I don't really want to come back down here and leave a great big yarn behind so I just come down a tiny bit and then I can work either up or down so back up into here to feather the colour and then back down into there to thicken it up so in this way you don't have to slavishly follow a line and putting the stitches where it's best for you to put them once you've got enough stitches in then you know that you've got the way of the feathers and so you, you just easily carry on not crowding them not leaving big gaps unless unless you want to like down here maybe i want to leave the big gaps but you you don't is by the same effect you don't want them crowded up either i've finished all that i do feel it's a bit dark so i am going to lighten that up with some stranded thread but whilst i've got this gray in my needle i'm going to come back up to here because randa's eye is really flecked and it's that creamy colour and the brown and this sort of a grey as well and so I'm just going to put in some little stitches and it's just really doing little tiny seed type stitches they're not going in all different directions but they are just little small individual stitches that they'll blend in with the other colours as I put the other brown on here but I know where I need the grey to be I'm going to leave this grey at the top of his beak because I might need it the colour here is more grey than this bit so I do have this dark grey and this brown in the cruel wool neither of them are quite right but I'm hoping both together they will be right so I've actually put both strands in my needle and I'm going to embroider down the back. If it doesn't work, I'll, I'll do them one at a time. But I think it might look better than either of them, either or. So here goes. I'm going to do quite shortish, shortish stitches because again, it's quite mottled. Because I can always highlight with either of the colours afterwards. This might be a quick way of getting the embroidery in in the first place. I think I'll change my needle and put this white through here. And I think I'll start at the top to see how it looks might not make enough of a difference oh yes it does okay i'm just going to randomly go through here with this white and i won't have to pull it too far in or else it's going to disappear i think that might just well be enough i've got two strands of a brightish yellow and i've already got a gold there and i think a combination of both is going to do the beak and funnily it's only the bottom beak that is yellow the top beak is black just try and learn some longish longish stitches i'll change to the gold actually i think i might need a darker one on this i'm going to go for darker i've got a bit of an orange here somewhere I think, I think I'll go for that. Try this bit. Take this nearer to the tip. Actually, the tip of his bottom bill is also black. I'm going to go along here with this orange. So that the bright yellow is more of a highlight, I think. And I think I'll use this silver grey and then black right from the head and just put enough in that when I over stitch with the black I have somewhere to put his nostril and everything 
I'm going to just put one or two flecks of this grey through here. Well, I've sort of jumped ahead. I couldn't uh, resist starting to do the song thrush's beautiful mottled feathers. And they are a very dark brown, which I didn't really have. So what I've done is I've split down another different brown. And actually, when you look at it, it's a bit thicker than the cruel wool, but not much. Actually, you can see how it'll embroider in really successfully. But because it wasn't dark enough, I've actually paired it with a single strand of black stranded cotton. Don't be worried about combining things like that. It's an embroidery. It's not going to be going through the washing machine or things like that. If you need to combine different types of thread, there's no rules to say you can't do that. And as I've started to put these little triangular um, markings down, sometimes I just see the brown, but sometimes they're really dark because I can see the black coming through. And that, again, it stops the embroidery being flat because you're bringing variation of colour in and variation of texture. So I think that's really a, quite a good tip is combine what you've got to get the effect that you're trying to get and so at the moment I definitely needed a darker brown than I had it would be easy to go out and buy a darker brown that's the easy thing but I have so much I might as well try and work with what I've got and then it's costing me less for one thing and you feel as if you're doing you're being more creative and in the end, what's the worst that can happen? It doesn't work out the way you thought. And so you change and do something else. And I did originally think I was going to do fly stitch up here, but they were too rounded at the top. And I really needed the, the markings to be pointed. They're very arrow shaped. And so in the end, the, uh, the fly stitch just wasn't pointy enough at the top. And so I'm just working upwards with two straight stitches together. And then sometimes I put an extra one on to thicken it up, to make it a wider marking. Like on this one. I just take the point a little bit further up to preserve the pointiness of it. I was supposed to be finishing the beak and the eye, but I just couldn't, uh, I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop myself. It's all playing. I think that's what it is. It's all just playing, having a lovely time, embroidery or, or, and stitching. It hopefully shouldn't be stressful. And I hope I never make you think that you, you, you make mistakes because I try not to call them mistakes. I do make them, but you just have to move forward and know that it's an opportunity. A mistake's always, it's an opportunity to do something different, to think about something in a different way. Sometimes things come out better because of it because it makes your brain have to think your way around it and you come up with a different solution. But if it stresses you so much that you frightened to do something or you won't do something because you're frightened of making a mistake, it'll, it'll take the enjoyment out of it. Anyway, that, that's what I think anyway. And in the end, it's a pure pleasure. So I'm just, as you can see, I'm just working these beautiful markings. I do quite like this half embroidered look. I know this is a bit more involved in stitching than what I've usually been doing, but I don't want anybody to think that that's the only thing that they can do. They can do anything they like. If you want to do more stitching, do more stitching. If you want to do more um, embroidery type thing, do that. You don't have to stick to one thing. I just like to do anything that I 
particularly want to do at the time. And I've been wanting to do a more embroidered bird than um, for a while. Just about to finish his beak and his eye. I've put a double strand of black stranded cotton in here. I want to start right at the tip of his beak because I don't really want that to thicken at all. Sometimes it's hard to keep them so pointy. And I'm going to lay in just some straight stitches. That. So the next one is not going to go right up to the beak. Right up to the tip, sorry. It's going to come about an eighth of an inch away. So I can preserve the point. Just split these stitches here. I want this to look padded. I'm just going to do it with thread. So just doing some satin stitches across where I know the eye will be. And I'll cross those stitches and go. So I've gone horizontally. Now I'm going to go vertically. Okay, with a smaller needle, I'm just going to try and get the shape of the eye first. I know it needs to come up here a bit more. It's a bit bigger than I've got drawn on. I've got a single strand of white, a uh, strand of cotton. I'm just going to go back around this eye with a few stitches to lighten this up and then put a little highlight in. Put a little stitches to show he's alive. I've got this, uh, this is actually a little bit of cruel wool in cream, but I'm going to put some sort of scruffy feathers that come out from underneath the wing, which is why I left this bit a little bit undone, because they have to go on here. And I'm just going to split the stitches to try and keep them fine, but looking curvy. I do feel that little bit of silver grey there has really done a good job of um, making the shadow. And now we're on to legs 11, onto the legs. I don't feel I want to stitch them. I might actually bring the ink tents back in and just paint them up in a better way and get ready to put the grass on. I am just going to paint them in because I feel if I stitch them, I might ruin them. And I'm going to mix up a brownie pink, not hardly any water. And I'm just going to go in at the top to make a shadowy bit and go down the leg. I need to make sure this one looks like it's coming from the front of the body. And I need a highlight there as well because it's sort of very pale at the front and a darker pink at the back. I've got all these lovely greens in the cruel wool. So I think I'll start about here and make that the bottom of where the stitching comes from. And it's not going to be any more difficult than just doing lots of straight stitches. But I'm going to keep the back free of lots of thread. So and wherever I go down, going to come up a little bit further along and choose a different direction to do my stitching and in this way I'll just build up a nice bit of grass I think I do want them to look like he's in among it so that's why I'm taking them right up to his body because I want I definitely want them to look like they're behind and in front, that he's in among it rather than just stood on the front. I've taken a couple of colours along here now and also I've kept the light colour just to the edges because I thought by concentrating on the dark it would give a shadow of under his body. 
sometimes I just want to come in underneath something. Maybe I don't want it to be as noticeable or as a being right in the front. I'll just thread it through. Well, I've taken them out of the hoop and I'm really pleased with how he's turned out. I've actually extended the grass down here a bit because it looked like he had very short legs. So he's now standing in a bit of long grass. I think the best thing I've learned about doing this is the fact that the tapestry wool actually split down so well into two strands and it embroidered perfectly the same as the cruel wool. And so if there's one takeaway from that is if you've got the colour in tapestry wool, just split it down and don't bother going buying the cruel wool if you maybe only need a little bit, but if the tapestry wool is too thick. It's all an experiment. You just pick your needle up and start somewhere and see where the needle and thread takes you. Anyway, I'll leave you with him. Song thrush. Another page in my bird book. Well, I hope you really enjoyed watching that song thrush come to life. I really enjoyed painting the image first, but then I didn't leave much of the painting left unstitched. That's because I really enjoy stitching, but I definitely will revisit that, I think. So here he is, and it might just be the last one. I have to really think about how I'm going to go forward, because my my very first idea was that it was going to be a book and I've referred to it all the time as my fabric bird book. A few people mentioned how it would be lovely as a wall hanging and how it was a shame to put them in a book and when I get them all together they are, it's quite thick. So my next page, my next pages would have actually been a front page and a rear page. But now I'm wondering whether I should make a book or whether I should make a wall hanging. And so I thought I'd leave it up to you because you were all really clever by voting for the quilt when I did my uh, choosing a project. And I was so happy, even though I was, oh my goodness, I've got to do this quilt. But it was the best decision and it came out so well. So I am going to throw this to you all my lovely subscribers and just say let me know what you think I should do should I put it in a book should I make a wall hanging or have you got another suggestion and whichever most people say that's what I will do I will either put it in a book or I will make a wall hanging although where it's going to hang I actually don't know I have to make room on the community page I will post all of the birds together so you can see them all laid out even though remember they won't be that big once the excess fabrics off them but that's what i'll do i'll get that done sometime this week the other exciting channel news is at long last i have the bags and sorry i had to take a moment there if you've been around my channel for a little while you might realize when you've seen some things that i started this since my husband passed away, my husband Michael. And sewing really got me through really difficult times. And it's something I've always done. And it was always my hobby and what I spent all my time doing when I wasn't working as a professional gardener. And then I stopped gardening in January of this year and the sewing just took over. And once my first little two minutes of my first book went online, um, because it got so much views, my daughter Naomi, who lives in Berlin, she said, why don't you do something and make a video about how, what you did and how you did it. That's how my channel started. So, and I wasn't on any social media or anything. So, since the Kawandi went up and since the, my, my video of Harrogate went up, the numbers of the subscribers have just been going wild and I, I'm so happy about it but at the same time it's been quite overwhelming with Michael not being here. I'm wearing my cardi that I knit and as you'll maybe notice I put pink roses all the way around except for this one here which is yellow because it was his favourite rose and so I wore that today because I was feeling a bit overwhelmed about everything. 
which brings me to the bags. When I ordered these bags, I had, I had just got 1,000 subscribers and I was so nervous about ordering them that I only ordered 100. And it's taken ages for them to come because there was a bit of a problem with the colour originally. In fact, I can show you. So this was how they first came. And the company that I chose, which is a family company, they've been super helpful. And they admitted themselves that there was a problem getting the colour reproduced from my painting. And I have... I have my painting that I did from my original embroidery that I did on paper after I did the bag for Suzanne who was the winner of the thousand subscriber job. So the company had this and obviously it didn't really come out well. So that's to one side because they've done an amazing job and I'm super super happy with them but I just have a hundred. It's getting near to the posting date for Christmas and so um, it's been difficult to think about because I, I just got overwhelmed with everything but what I'm going to do is I'm going to limit these when they go in the shop which I haven't even got yet um, so I'm going to limit it to the UK only because it's the easiest thing for me to do because I've now ordered some boxes and, and a nice packing and everything like that and so once these hundred uh, I'm, I'm hoping they're just going to go because at the moment I have no income. I stopped doing my gardening, I was self-employed, I started the channel and in the back of my mind I was just like I'm doing this anyway I might as well film it and then once I got it started to get people and I got monetized, I actually chose not to put adverts in the middle of my videos because I didn't want to ruin the experience of watching them. So I know if I click on things and then the video the adverts come up all the time, it's annoying. And so I purposely haven't done that. I can't I can't stop them coming at the beginning or the end. I can stop them being in the middle. And so I've disabled that. And so even though I do earn something now from YouTube, it could be more if I let all the adverts go in because on my length of video, I could have two or three ad breaks through it, but I don't. But that leaves me still needing to earn some money. Hence why I thought the bags were a good idea. So now I'm realizing I need to order more. But it'll be easier this time because Indigo, the company that I'm getting them through, they, ha they have the design now, they know exactly, and I can just go and order more, which will be perfect. So in the new year, I expect that I'll be able to stock my shop with more and be able to send them out to you all. So I'm really sorry it took me so long to get, to get it up and going. But it's just, I'm happiest when I'm just doing my sewing or knitting or anything else and the actual trying to get other things up and running just leaves me feeling a little bit overwhelmed and it's just because Michael's not here because he would have been doing these sorts of things for me because he always encouraged me to do what I wanted to do which was well anything crafty really so with that out the way I'm just going to say I will be getting this shop up and running and as soon as I get the boxes, which I could have had sorted, but I just kept putting it out of my mind because I didn't want to deal with it. I just, as soon as, as soon as I thought about it, I just ended up sewing instead. This is a long winded way of saying, I only have a hundred and they'll be going up on the shop when I've got it, just to the UK because I, I can't get the I can't get it in the post to overseas anyway at this late stage because I just won't be organised enough. So I'm really sorry to those of you who might have wanted one. You're going to have to wait till the new year, I think. And then I'll be more confident in what I'm doing. So with that out of the way, the other thing was, I hope you haven't minded me rambling on right at the end. And 
I'm so grateful to everybody who's subscribing and liking my videos and making comments. I am the only one here doing it, so I'm doing the filming by myself, the editing, there's nobody else helping me here to do it. And I sit there and reply to everybody because I just think it's so lovely that you've taken the time to send a comment to me and I'm trying my best to get to everybody. And just thank you very much everyone. So I'm just, with that, I'm just going to say thank you so much for watching, subscribing. And I'm sorry I'm ending up a bit overwhelmed. I might get edited out in the end for all I know. But just thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. And if Michael was here, he'd say thank you too. Bye from Marion's World. Until Wednesday. Bye everyone.